behalf of the Commanding General, Training and Education Command, Lieutenant General Kevin M. Imes. Welcome to today's Change of Command Ceremony, where Brigadier General Farrell J. Sullivan will relinquish command to Brigadier General Anthony M. Henderson. At this time, I would like to introduce and acknowledge our distinguished guests, the Honorable Theodore Britton, Ambassador Barbado, Barbados and Granada, the Honorable Richard B. Spencer, former Secretary of the Navy, and many others present today who have supported Training Command in accomplishing its vital mission. Thank you for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation, March On of the Colors, and the playing of the National Anthem and Honors. Good afternoon, let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, on the occasion of this time-honored ceremony, when the mantle of command is passed from Brigadier General Farrell J. Sullivan to Brigadier General Anthony M. Henderson, we give you thanks for the gift of leadership and for those who have been chosen to command. For the past two years, Brigadier General Sullivan has faithfully borne that mantle and exercised the leadership skills that you have blessed him with. In so doing, Training Command has excelled in providing career-enhancing training to our nation's finest warfighters. As this chapter in his Marine Corps career is now complete, we ask that you continue to bless him and his family as they transition into their next assignment. Lord, we thank you also for this opportunity to welcome Brigadier General Henderson and his family. And as he consumes command, we ask that you grant him strength and wisdom, empower him, as he leads Train Command on a continued path of excellence into the future. And finally, Lord, we ask that you continue to watch over the Marines, sailors, and family members of Training Command. And we ask that you bless each one here today. For it's in your holy name that we pray. Amen. March on the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, the reviewing officer for today is the Commanding General, Training and Education Command, Lieutenant General Kevin M. Imes. Lieutenant General Imes has deferred honors for today's ceremony. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the Commanding General, Training Command, Brigadier General Farrell J. Sullivan. Honors to Brigadier General Sullivan, Commanding General, Training Command.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Sergeant Major, deliver the colors to the commanding general. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the ceremony's most solemn moment, the actual passing of command. The battle colors of a Marine Corps unit symbolize the authority and accountability of command. Transferring the colors during the ceremony symbolizes the relinquishing of command by Brigadier General Sullivan, and by accepting the colors, Brigadier General Henderson accepts command and confirms his total commitment to the Marines and sailors that he will command. Sergeant Major Cook is delivering the colors to the commanding general. From the Commandant of the Marine Corps to Brigadier General Farrell J. Sullivan, change of command. Effective 10, June 2024, you stand relieved of all your duties as the commanding general of training command. And you are directed to report to Deputy Commandant Combat Development and Integration as the Director of the Capabilities Development Directorate, signed Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. From the Commandant of the Marine Corps to Brigadier General Anthony M. Henderson, Assumption of Command. Effective 10 June 2024, you will assume all duties and responsibilities as Commanding General, Training Command. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to Brigadier General Anthony M. Henderson, Commanding General of Training Command. the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. A letter from the Commandant, Brigadier General Sullivan. Farrell, congratulations on a job well done. The accomplishments of training command during your tenure are a direct reflection of your outstanding leadership. I know firsthand how much effort you put into ensuring all aspects of training fully met the needs of the Marines and sailors in preparing them for the fights of today and the battlefields of tomorrow. You were undoubtedly the right Marine at the right time to lead this extremely complex command. With you at the helm, Training Command capitalized on important technological advancements 
and postured our Corps to continue delivering combat-capable Marines to the operating forces. The plans you developed and implemented to culti cultivate Marines and sailors will substantially increase our Corps' lethality on future battlefields. I also greatly appreciate your commitment to maintaining a high standard in your training leadership. The Marine Corps is grateful to you and Marta for your leadership, as well as everything you do for our Marines, sailors, and their families. We wish you the very best in your next assignment. A letter from the Commandant to Brigadier General Henderson. Tony, as you assume command of Training Command, know that you have my total trust and confidence. I know you will be bring the same outstanding leadership to this assignment that you have demonstrated throughout your career. Congratulations and best wishes to you and Sonia as you take responsibility for Training Command's daily operations. Semper Fidelis, signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Ives, Normally don't use the podium, but uh, I guess I'll go around in the, uh, the club after this uh, for a comment from the podium. But uh, on days like today, when the chaplain uh, gives a, a great little benediction and then the commandant reads two letters, there's a saying that the Brits use, it's, someone has eaten all of my cucumber sandwiches. There's not a lot left to say uh, after speaking from both of those. But uh, I do have a, a couple of comments because these two gentlemen are absolutely outstanding. First. Welcome to our distinguished guest, uh, to Ambassador Britain, Secretary Spencer. Thank you both for being here today. To our three stars, so uh, General Bierman, General Glenn, General Sharati. Trying to see, did I miss anybody else? But I tell you, we have a cast of 20, 25 plus, one stars, two stars. I think we have almost every colonel from the, uh, the Quantico area here, as well as many of the MSCs from inside Training Command. But uh, to them, did Snap Brophy make it today? Snap, are you here? Yes, sir. Sinatra, special welcome to you. Thank you. Very special having you here today. Uh, but to all of the Colonel's Commander, Sergeant Major's family, friends, Marines, thanks for being here today with us. I'd like to preface my comments here today about these two great gentlemen with just a, a couple of tidbits about what training command is and why this is so important. Well, in advancing the, uh, the legacy of our Marine Corps warfighting excellence, and as well as preparing this next generation of Marines to fight and operate in a contested and complex environment against a peer-level adversary, Training Command has been at the absolute forefront. And many times, the point man, reconning with training systems and capabilities, out there researching the unknown concepts and capabilities that our force design, and using a trial by fire to determine how we will generate the next force of Marines. This command touches and influences every Marine in our Corps and most of the sailors in our service. It plays a pivotal role in enhancing the transformation that is our Corps, both officer and enlisted, from the time that they step off at the entry level platform and into their first FMF unit. As they say, going from cook to infantry officer to pilot, all from boot camp and OCS, through roughly 720 disparate but synchronized programs of instruction. It is a very special trust and confidence that is given to the Commanding General of Training Command as he holds the resources and the keys to our most valuable asset inside of our Marine Corps, and that is the lives and bright minds of our young Marines. Training Command is charged with shaping, challenging, and training those young minds and this current generation to fight to, with today's kit, with today's mission, and then rapidly advance tomorrow on our force design initiatives and new capabilities. In this pursuit, I can say unequivocally that Training Command has been an exceptionally good steward of the resources it's been given, although scant, and has still generated the most resilient, lethal, and most highly trained Marine Corps our Corps has ever seen. Tony, today that special trust and confidence has been passed on to you. I'm supremely confident, to use the same word as the, uh, the chaplain, that you are ready to hold that mantle and carry it forward. We have chosen the right Marine, the right man for the job. 
For those, General Henderson comes to us out of the, uh, the J-5, uh, recently out of the, uh, the Joint Staff as Deputy Director for Strategic Plans. Deep in the bowels of the Pentagon, welcome out and uh, enjoy the sun. His stellar reputation as both a uh, leader and Marine is evident from just a, a quick perusal of his bio, uh, and it has definitely preceded you. Always does, Tony. Um, but a quick glance will tell you that he is an infantry officer's dream. He is commanded at every level, from the infantry platoon through the, uh, the view, and on to being a med level commander. When we talk about strategic insight, he has been at the forefront of the Department of Defense and the Department of the Navy, hand selected by the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to serve as uh, his special assistant, and by our Secretary of the Navy, Secretary Spencer, to be his strategic advisor and his MA. As well, if you want to compete with his academic background, good luck to you there. He's also a graduate of both academic edu or executive education programs for MIT and Harvard. <coughs> Well done, Tony. Tony, you've established yourself as a superb Marine leader, over 35 years of dedicated service to our Corps, and I think it reflects true servant leadership with the way that you have served. We're lucky to have such immense talent following uh, Sully uh, into uh, this job, and I'm sure that you're gonna sustain the institutional momentum that's needed to carry this command and our Marine Corps and our Marines into the next generation with the appropriate level of training and education. Susan joins me in welcoming you, Sonia, to the TCOM and the Training Command family. We wish both of you all the best as you take on this mantle. Okay, now Sully, over to you and Marta. You've been absolutely inspirational uh, in this position, professionally and personally to me. Your perseverance, your operational expertise on some of the most key and critical items that we've had in the Marine Corps and in my command in the past two years has put us in a position to succeed at levels that I just did not imagine. And I think it sends a message on the volume and the capacity of you as a leader that you can handle this immense span of control and exceed so well. I think you have few other equals in this Corps and I look forward to your success as you move to the future. But since your arrival just two short years ago, you've definitely leveraged what I would call probably the apex of operational leadership in command, coming right out of both 26 Mu and then 51-5 Task Force as a commander. I liked how you blended the two of those together with your MACTAF expertise to develop this command and to develop these Marines at a level that I, again, just could not have imagined. You've been insightful and relentless in pursuit of the operational and institutional improvements that we have needed in this command and generated a level of impact that wasn't felt just at training commander across the enterprise, but all the way up through my command and up to the, uh, the Commandant of the Marine Corps. Across your 19 plus 06 level commands and 05s, 96-ish level formal learning centers, and across 35 sister service schools, um, you have just driven meaningful impact uh, and lasting change to this institution. As well, your leadership and guidance across training command and this distributed staff has ensured that the priorities of the Commandant, TCOM, and your own command have, in, have made rapid implementation of those changes necessary to deliver force design. You've done everything from standardize your two uh, SOIs to bring in refinement to the uh, infantry marine course uh, you have as well completely revamped marksmanship, bringing new words to what lethality means for the individual Marine. And then as well, professionalize our instructor cadre with the Center for Learning and Faculty Development. And lastly, and certainly not least, and I'll look for, uh, for Snap to echo this, but your unmatched ability to, even as a general officer, continue to learn. Your ability to pick up naval aviation pilot production at the rate and capability that you did and speak like an aviator was just awe-inspiring. And Snap, I'm gonna ask you for a special favor after this. Uh, if you agree, we gotta get this guy a set of wings. I have never met a grunt <laughs> that can speak aviation as well as Sully can. But Sully, your impetus and your incredible drive didn't end there. You turned that into a uh, campaign plan that will ensure that this movement forward will continue to resonate for years throughout this enterprise. I think it's easily stated from all of that 
that you have exceeded every expectation that I've had for you and really raised the bar uh, to a completely new height on all of our training venues, our instructor cadre, and all of our programs into what I would best be described as world class. Well done, and I can't think of a better commander that I would have wanted to serve with during this time. Martyr, to you, from Susan and I, your dedication, selfless sacrifice, and continue to support to Farrell over these two years has been remarkable and most appreciated. It's a debt that we can never repay, both to the families and to the command for what you have given us. But thank you, and Susan joins me in welcoming or in sending you on your way and into CDD. So lastly, Sully, I'm proud and honored to have served with you over the last two years. We were lucky to get you when we did, and we were even luckier to keep you for a full two years. You leave a legacy, a legacy of professionalism, commitment, and compassion that I think will continue to have impact across this enterprise, this command, and across a generation, if not two, for the training that you held the rudder on throughout this entire time. You've been exceptionally impactful. You've been a great friend. You've been a great commander. Congratulations, Semper Fi. Good luck as you move these hundreds of miles across the base and around the corner <laughs> to your new job. But ladies and gentlemen, it's been my privilege, my honor to serve with Sully, and now I'll turn the stage over to him. Ladies and gentlemen, the former commander of Training Command, Farrell Sullivan. Okay, I'm not going to use the microphone, um, but I am going to have to use a couple of note cards, and I'm going to buy all the print later anyway, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're back in. I know you saw that uh, about face I did very poorly earlier. Uh, it's the OCS survey, please, uh, you know, we can do some re remediation after this. Uh, but, um, Secretary, sir, thank you for being here. Ambassador, uh, thank you for being here as well. Uh, and your spouses, uh, General Lyons and Susan, uh, thank you. Lieutenant General Beerman, Lieutenant General Glenn and Denise, uh, Mrs. Kim Donovan, Lieutenant General Shirodi and Ms. Joan, uh, thank you for being here. Um, Lieutenant General McGee, not from the Marine Corps. If you are here, sir, or ma'am, I don't know you. Um, not here? Okay, so I'm not going to apologize. <laughs> but there are a uh, couple of senior civilians here, too. Mr. Strobel, thank you for being here. Mr. Greco, uh, thank you very much. Uh, there's a ton of uh, two star and one star and colonels and sergeants major and um, you know, ranks all the way down, really important people. Uh, family and friends, thank you all for being here today. And as, a, as uh, General Lyons already did, Admiral Brophy is here, but he's also here with his wife, Kara, uh, from Corpus Christi, Texas. That's where he commands uh, Sinatra from, which is uh, like training command uh, it's spread across the country. Uh, but the partnership, uh, really, you're the senior member. We're much more of a junior member. But uh, since you have been at Sinatra, it has really uh, changed um, the way we produce aviators in a much more positive way than Marine Corps. And thank you for allowing, although we're a junior partner, you treated it like it's 50 50. So. Thank you very much, and it means a ton that you're here. Um, Lieutenant General Himes, um, actually, sir, before I get to you, um, Chaplain, thank you uh, for the prayer. I appreciate it to the band. I have been to the Secretary Division Chief of Staff and had the Secretary Division Band work with the Chief of Staff. Uh, there is no unit that is uh, busier, uh, and I'm not making that up. Uh, any organization that owns the band and the band is. So thank you for being here, because you never know the people that you're serving, uh, and it can be thankless, uh, but please know that my uh, thanks is, uh, is sincere. Uh, Staff Sergeant, thank you for coming back from, uh, and you came back to training command and you to do this, because you have the voice of uh, someone that should be at 80. <laughs> and, and, and thank you for being here. And then Reggie, uh, Colonel McClellan and uh, Sergeant Major Gay, uh, you get paid to train lieutenants, uh, to make uh, warrant officers and gunners, and to you know run the uh, Marine Corps Martial Arts Center of Excellence. And I think I forgot one word in the acronym there, because you guys changed it over the years. but. Uh, you don't really get paid to do this, right? But people don't understand always what goes on. So the borderline here at the base school, you're supporting an uh, endless uh, slew of events, the IP, retirements, uh, change the command. Thanks for doing it, and you guys always do it the right way. General Lodge, uh, your, your comments uh, were, were kind. Um, some of them may have been true, but most of them were, 
for the fault of other people that are in the crowd here, sir. But uh, I really uh, it was an honor to uh, to serve uh, in training command and to serve underneath you. Uh, you are a decent human being through and through, and um, you've been a great advocate for training command. Um, you you want to keep momentum going, and if I needed to come to you for something, uh, the door was always open. You always listen. But if I came in with uh, something that wasn't thought out, or I hadn't asked the right questions, you let me know that too. And that kind of feedback, the more senior you get, is absolutely critical, and we don't get it enough. Uh, so thank you for holding me accountable and uh, for being patient and, uh, and giving me the leash to, to move. And Susan, again, the way that you two do this together is a great example of all this. So thank you. Uh, to my wife, and the love of my life, uh, best decision I ever made. Um, marry you and, and thank you for saying yes to that. Uh, <laughs> this doesn't get easier as time goes on. And about two years ago, in the second week of May, we found out we were coming to training command. So uh, I had to be there by uh, sometime in June. And so uh, you did what you always do, figure out how to get the family uh, in the right spot, what's best for them in terms of school and what camps they were going to go to, we had to finish the moving details. And, uh, and you did all those things that was closing out things in 2005. And then General Schrodi called and offered you a job, uh, and he wouldn't take no for an answer, which was really uh, unique to see. Uh, <laughs> uh, say that. Uh, and then you became the president of the school board on base, and uh, you, you taught CCD to the second graders so they could get their first community this year. Um, and in doing all that, uh, your job, whether or not we talk, discussed it or not, your job came second uh, to mine. And so you, you continued to sacrifice, which I uh, greatly appreciate. Love you. Uh, and to the boys, uh, we have three of our boys at the end here. Um, you guys don't feel sorry for yourselves. You know that we don't do that in our family. Uh, but you also you don't, you don't get to choose what you do often uh, in terms of where we go and, and those kind of things. And so I appreciate the sacrifices you guys make and, uh, and how you deal with it. Uh, even though uh, Joey and Brendan, I don't think I met, I made it to any one of your middle school soccer games in the last few years. But I did make it to your club games on the weekends, and then I made it to your rec basketball games, almost every one of them. And Danny, I made it to, uh, I think, all but one or two wrestling meets. I got to a couple of parents' nights, but missed a lot of them. Joey, I did make it to that meeting with all your teachers that we had one day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I won't go into the details on that. <laughs> but we always managed to have dinner on the dinner table at 90 minutes later than, uh, than we would have liked. Um, but uh, yeah, I appreciate how you guys have adjusted to keep uh, this opportunity available uh, for me and for us as a family. Um, my mom is here, um, so mom, thank you. I, I often um, give thanks that I grew up in your house. And there's no, there's, well, there might be a couple, but you're in the running for the mother, the single parent who dedicated uh, the most to the Marine Corps readiness over the last 30 plus years. She's got one son who's commanding the First Marine Regiment right now, another one who runs his base as a civilian Marine, and then um, I'm no longer in command, um, but I'm still serving. So you know, the commandant has to thank you for the Duras readiness that you contributed to. <laughs> you certainly have done that. Uh, and then to uh, my, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, really uh, my second set of parents, uh, wherever we have been around the world, uh, you guys have figured out a way to be a key part of our family care plan. So uh, thank you for that. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I, I want to briefly talk about training command. Uh, General I'm said a lot of it. But I am exceptionally proud to have been part of this command. And, uh, and I have fallen in love with it uh, in the time that I've been here. Uh, many people think, uh, both officer and enlisted, that they understand training command because they spent a couple of months at one of the schools at some point in their career. And that, that is barely scratching the surface in terms of what goes on. And I'll explain to you a little bit about that in a second, about what goes on and how it works. Uh, and not, not to beat the chest or to have anyone feel sorry, but just so that you, that you do understand that uh, the World Class Organization that General Lyons was talking about uh, wasn't established by me. It's established by uh, the, the warriors and patriots that work at Training Command Headquarters. And there are all 100 of them. Right? There's 60 Marines, half of which are sergeants and below, and there's 40 civilians. And uh, I would say pound for pound, I'd put our civilians up against any Marine civilians uh, that serve the Marine Corps, uh, because they come every day with their lunch pail, they're, they're passionate about what they do, and they're experts in their field. And, uh, and what we do in Training Command is take the Marines who have just recently gotten their equal of an anchor uh, at the end of their time at the MCRDs uh, through the Crucible, 
they then go to either one of the SOIs, and then from there they go to other schools across the country, uh, and, and hopefully arriving in the fleet at the right time, trained to the right standard, so they can then deploy forward on behalf of this great nation. But in the meantime, there's a lot that goes on below the waterline. Because right? those Marines have to get from the MCRD to, to SOI. And they have to, we have to establish a standard at the SOIs and the follow-on schools that mimics the standard that is set at the MCRDs. So, so that we don't lose them along the way. So that they're seeing the same level of professionalism at every stop until they get to the operating forces. And then it's up to the operating forces from there until they come back to us for advanced training. You can imagine there's a lot that goes on below the world line. There's, um, a, as of this morning, 25,000 Marines and sailors and civilians on our rolls. Right? That's the size of the division. Right? And in the, in the wintertime, it goes up to 45,000. Right? 7,000 permanent personnel, the rest are students. Across 1706 commands that are all command slated, and 1905 commands that are all command slated. Across 38 DOD bases, six of which are Marine, 32 which are a sister service of some sort. 800 POIs, programs of instruction, 500 plus MOSs that are awarded. Right, with, the, with the 100 people that work in a couple of trailers over by the, uh, the 13th hole in the golf course. Right, and they can give a damn about the building they work in. They come in every day and they are uh, excited and passionate about what they're doing. And that's why I love training command. And um, I, you know, I can't say that forever. Uh, I would happily say that longer. I'm not asking to, sir. I'm just saying that. <laughs> I would gladly do it because uh, I love going to work every day. Uh, people that I get to spend time with in those trailers and people I get to, uh, to see when I travel. And so, um, but we don't do it alone. Um, we, we work very closely with MITRIC, which uh, I saw General Bowers here a moment ago, very closely with MNRA, people like uh, Ahmad Williamson is no longer there, Mr. Malillo, Eric Reed, uh, Chick Rideout, and, uh, and all the other leaders that have that have been or uh, are there or recently been within MNRA. Uh, because uh, MCRIC recruits them and they come in on a certain length of contract and MNRA wants to get the most out of them, uh, which means we can't keep them training for too long. Right? Just the right amount of time, so that's good tension to have to kind of figure that out. But MCRIC, yeah, those recruiters work hard to bring them in. And uh, we have to make sure that uh, ELT attrition, uh, entry level pipeline attrition uh, is not uh, any higher than it, it absolutely needs to be because you know, someone hasn't met the standard. And so um, from there, uh, we work closely with CDD, where I'm going to go next. And I keep getting people, keep, keep saying, you don't forget where you come from. Uh, don't forget the, the T part of the dot will be uh, and I won't. Uh, we work closely with the outfields. We work closely with the division commanders, the wing commanders, the MLG commanders, uh, the installation commanders. We work closely with DCI. We work closely with the 32 other base commanders or center of excellence commanders that are not even within our service. Right, so the, the scope and scale of what we do day in and day out is, uh, is quite broad. Uh, it's deep uh, and it can be, uh, can be complicated, although I would not say necessarily complex. Uh, but it's like an aircraft carrier. Like if, uh, if, you're, if you're closing with danger, like you've got to start that turn early or else uh, there's going to be units in the fleet that don't have what they need when they need it to the standard they and, uh, and so I appreciate the steel sharpening steel amongst the entities that I mentioned, the partners uh, in, in this, uh, this great endeavor. Um, I want to tell a couple of stories about why I love training command. Uh, by talking about what happens when we're not here. So our major and I travel two to three weeks out of the month. That's why I missed all the, uh, the games. Um, but whenever Sergeant major and I would go out, uh, I would ask the Marines, uh, I really wanted to talk to Marines who had just finished MCT, Marine combat training for 21 days after boot camp. That's where they learned to be a rifleman. I want to know how that training is going. And so I, I asked the Marines every time I walked in, sort of they did the same. And almost to a man and woman, they would say the same thing, that they absolutely loved it. That's why they joined the Marine Corps. And uh, one day we were down at Courthouse Bay with the engineer school, and we had about 50 Marines who were waiting to start the class. And uh, I asked them what they thought of MCT. And the only complaint they had is they they only got 100 rounds for the M240 Gulf. And they didn't get to shoot a, uh, throw a grenade. And they didn't spend enough time out in the field. And it starts to, it almost starts to make you cry because, because that's what you want to hear, but you don't want them to say it unless they believe it. I'll tell you about Sergeant Meal, who was a combat instructor out of SOI West in the infantry uh, Marine Corps at the infantry training battalion. Uh, he was in, um, I can 
see that well, my judge is, is bobbing his head up and down because we've put this as investigation so many times. Um, but Sergeant Meal was in the grenade pit uh, when the student comes in. After the student does all the training they need to do, they're there now about to throw a grenade for the first time in their life. And the Marine is a left-handed thrower, so he, he pulls the pin, and the pin is in his right hand. And Sergeant Meal is overseeing, doing everything right. But in the course of pulling the pin, the Marine allowed the grenade to slip, and the spoon fell to the ground, which for those who haven't thrown a grenade before, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> the spoon is not supposed to leave the grenade until you throw it. And so, uh, and you have about five seconds uh, with this grenade. And so Sergeant Meal now goes into action trying to dislodge the grenade from the Marine's hand, because now the Marine doesn't know what to do, even though he was taught what to do. He's still holding on to the grenade. And so in this five seconds, Sergeant Meal eventually dislodges the grenade and gets the Marine out of the pit. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as the rain was leaving the pit, he, he hit the grenade and also went outside the pit. And now the Marine and the grenade are next to each other on the ground. So our meal jumps uh, on top of the Marine, and between him and the grenade, and shields the Marine from any injury, and he absorbs some shrapnel. He eventually recovers and goes back to full duty. But these are the kind of Marines uh, that we have in our ranks uh, with our training command. And I'll talk a little bit about the infantry Marine Corps, you know, where we have, I'm not sure I'd say revolutionized, but we've significantly improved, based on the Commandant's guidance, how we are now producing infantry Marines, which was long in need of addressing. And now we take uh, 14 Marines that have just arrived at ITB, and they, they're now led by a squad leader who leads them through what uh, is 14 weeks, about to go down to 12 weeks of uh, training. That one squad leader teaches them everything. Right? This is a Marine who just came from the fleet and is now teaching these Marines. He, gets to know, he or she gets to know them, right? put their fingerprint on them. And, uh, and it's, it's daunting, though, because you know, these are now Marines that came from the fleet are not professional instructors yet. We have to make them professional instructors. But think of like IOC and TBS for those who have been through those courses. Right? And we are producing a much better product. In my opinion, I didn't come up with the idea. Uh, and I, there's always a little bit of skepticism uh, from my perspective until you can see it in action. But this, this will generationally change the brain. It will if we are smart enough to uh, hold on to it and uh, see the value when it goes forward. And lastly, uh, when I, one of the trips I made down to Pensacola, because again, we're always traveling at these different locations, um, we had had, a, there had been a, a mishap um, with a T-6, which is a training aircraft that replaced the T-34, for those who remember that, it's a propeller, uh, right, prop, uh, am I right? Yeah, that's right, it's not. Yes, sir. <laughs> so they had a mishap, and uh, the IP did a great job, the instructor pilot, um, reducing the negative uh, outcomes of this happened. So when we were going down there, I wanted to see this. I would written it down. I want to meet this uh, instructor pilot. So I went and uh, I just thanked him and you know, asked, asked him to tell me what he thought about what happened. He's like, sir, you know, all I wish is that we could have gotten out of that airplane and gotten into another one right away so that I could have driven home the point that, uh, that the student naval aviator should have learned. And, and that aviator, they all went forward and continued through the training. but. There was no uh, worrying about his safety and you know anything like that. Of course, they do worry about those things, but but he was focused on what he was down there to do, which is to make world class aviators, uh, and and that's why I love being a training command. And, um, if any other stories I can tell, but the amount of risk that gets mitigated and managed day in and day out across these 17 schoolhouses, um, maybe it doesn't rival the division, but it's, uh, it's pretty damn close. And so I want to thank uh, people as I come to the end here. Um, I see a lot more of the 17 commanders, uh, colonel commanders, or Navy captains, we have two of them. Uh, I see more of them in the room than I thought, and I'm wondering who's commanding our schools. Well, you guys are <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy to see your smiling faces. And, uh, being a second rate division of Marine, for the most part, um, this is not River Road where your headquarters is a quarter mile and you know, everyone's right there next to each other. These are 06 commands that are, that are in some cases in the middle of nowhere. Um, and some, some of these in the middle of nowhere places are actually pretty awesome, like Fort Leonard Wood. Um, but they, they don't, you know, I, I get credit, I don't really get the credit. You know, it was Mark Liston, Chip Hall, and then Greg Jones and all their team that have changed the way we, uh, <coughs> the marksmanship in a way that uh, the old way pales in comparison. But 
It's these 06 commanders and your sergeant's major or your master gunnery sergeants that have made all the difference uh, and have led and commanded the way MCDP-1 talks about and have done it in almost every case uh, magnificently. And then to my staff, to the active duty and civilians uh, who are here in Quantico, again, uh, you, you fight well above your weight class. Um, the depths of knowledge you have about uh, what goes into um, developing curriculum, making world-class instructors, being able to take bureaucratic processes and speed them up in ways that hasn't been done before. I really am in awe of what you do. And then modernizing the learning environment where most of us would not recognize, uh, I mean, you've recognized some of it, but nowadays when you go to a school, you have an electronic device and all your content is online and it gives you multiple different modes and, and vehicles with which to learn through, uh, which is a great advancement uh, as far as I'm concerned. But I, uh, I would be sad to not see you every day. Uh, to my SJA, Alex Farsad, I spent way, way too much time with you. Uh, having been a division chief of staff, uh, I will say that, I'm not bragging about this, but our legal caseload was bigger than a, than a single Marine division, that's for sure. And uh, I spent a lot of time with you, and uh, I think that you are a world-class uh, lawyer. And I, I look forward to seeing you uh, continue. Corporal Marsh, are you here? Yes, sir. Yeah, you didn't think I was going to call you out. <laughs> That's my driver, and uh, he always listens to what's going on around him. And because uh, of that, I, I would always ask him questions about what he thought about topics that most corporals aren't getting asked uh, day in and day out. Uh, I appreciate those times you had a brilliant insight, and I appreciate those times where you said, you know what, sir, I don't know enough about that, so I'm not going to say anything. Uh, and I'm not trying to convince you in front of all these people to stay in the rank for. <laughs> <laughs> If you did change your mind, uh, you're the kind of rank we need to keep around. And then to my aides, uh, I think Snack Bird is here, but I know Connor Hankin is here, and uh, Christine, I know you're here too. Although you're not my aide anymore. So, sorry about that, Tony. Um, but yeah, I, an aide, uh, they come in and think they're going to manage your schedule and stuff like that, and I said, no, that's not what you're here to do. Uh, you need, you're a super aide, you're going to be like a, uh, Commander's Action Group. Like you're going to be a military assistant. You're going to be. You're going to share a brain with me and listen to everything that is talked about in every room that I'm in. Help me communicate, capture tasks, uh, give direction to the support commanders. And uh, each one of you did it a bit differently, but each one of you rose to the occasion and did that. And, uh, and I will always be thankful for that. Sergeant Major, um, you got here a couple of weeks before me. I see you back there hiding. Um, and uh, I, I think both learn that it's hard to wrap your arms around training command just because of how big it is. And it takes a while to figure it out. And so uh, I appreciate going on that journey with you. I appreciate the way, uh, again, people don't quite understand until you think about it. Like 17 sergeants major, command master chiefs, or uh, master gunnery sergeants, you got to corral uh, every day. And, uh, not corral, but you know what I mean. Uh, but they all have opinions about things, and they're not all apples and apples. Uh, and so the way that you manage that, very artfully, I appreciate, and, uh, and that's good training because going to MCI West is not going to be an easy test. <laughs> uh, and then to Colonel Digman, my chief of staff, uh, I have a high standard for chiefs because I've been a chief myself. We don't train people to do that, uh, and a lot of people don't do it well. Somehow you manage to keep all the balls in the air, make sure no task uh, dropped off the, uh, the plate, and, uh, and you did that with a lot going on around you. Uh, and so thank you. Uh, you did it the right way, and I appreciate it. And then finally, uh, Mr. Connor, uh, Jeff, where are you? Okay. Um, that's an honor to see you. Uh, I would, uh, there's no doubt in my mind, and uh, I know there's other civilian Marines here, but uh, you are the standard. Uh, but not just for the civilian Marines, the active duty Marines too. I wasn't going to say this, but I will. We have a sticker made, and it has Saint Jeff in Quantico. Jeff was the most important person for anything. Uh, it wasn't many; it was Jeff. So, um, yeah, I can't thank you enough. There's no PD that is ever going to capture all the tasks that you do, and no matter how hard I tried to leave after you, you just wouldn't let me do it. So, uh, so Jeff, to you and James, uh, what a great couple, what a great family, and uh, yeah, just a great friend. And uh, to Tony and Sonia. Tony, I gave the phone up earlier, so I think it's by now. 
or by the end of this uh, celebration, you'll have it. Um, but I appreciate the time we spent together. Uh, before this, uh, the only time I really spent with you was one day at EWS many years ago where you were having monitor meetings and you gave my orders at 3-8, and I was really happy about that. Uh, you were my monitor. Um, but just in the past week and a half and, and the months before that, we were, we were communicating. Uh, your passion and eagerness, the questions you're asking, uh, your experience as a back half officer, joint officer, um, I, I feel that training command's gonna be a good hand, and I really appreciate it. And you got uh, Sonia um, by your side, who's uh, always been exceptionally gracious and uh, graceful, and uh, having a retired colonel next to you doesn't hurt. <laughs> and I'm excited uh, to go over to CDD, uh, and I look forward to working with you with you all in a different capacity. Thank you all very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Brigadier General Henderson. Okay, uh, so as you sit here and you're uh, listening, taking in everything, and you're going through, it is humble uh, to be here and take this command. But to even just be here as a Marine. What you just heard between General Imes, his comments, Commandant's letter, uh, in my comments I'll talk about selling here in a minute. Um, they carry a great commitment, almost verbal. And so I'll start with, Lord, I ask you not to take the burdens from me, but give me shoulders to carry. I've done that every time I've ever taken the command. Uh, give a prayer. Uh, it's something that I hold on my lips when I die. And that is the prayer that Sonia and I will have going forward. So I'll go through some of the salutations here. I had a list. I was supposed to start with Secretary Spencer, Bass have written, but uh, we start with the band. Uh, if y'all can come hang out in the hall <laughs> and play, and so the beers are on me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time. There's a reason why at every change of command, we recognize the men and women who come and play in it. One, it sets an atmosphere, but two, they work harder than anyone wearing stars here. Their time, their commitment, their practice, and many of them are more qualified than the assignment they're in. They aren't so. so I've gone to many changes of command, many events where you're there. Thank you for being here, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Let's start to dispensers. say a few comments I'm recognizing that between me and my comments is the hawk I'll explain to my family the hawk is a bar of <laughs> and reputation in the Marine Corps in which we socialize and party but many times we study something uh, in that Marine so well. but thank you to the Spencers for being here thank you very much ambassador Ted Britton uh, is a family friend an original Montfort Point Marine uh, he was also invited to attend. His name is called here, although he's not in attendance uh, for the recognition. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, thank you for the words. Thank you for the confidence. Um, you've given me great advice and guidance, and I'm sure I will see or get uh, voluntarily or involuntarily much, much more as it is. It's time to grow and, uh, and time to do so much more. Uh, to uh, General Glenn, General Fairman, uh, I would say General Donovan, but the real General Obama is sitting here. General Sharodi, uh, all of our distinguished guests, to family, friends. Uh, fellow generals, admirals, fellow marines, sailors, soldiers, airmen, space, guardians. Well, Sonia and I are honored. Many of you, I call you out. Uh, you know, I see Fraser Crane back there. 
Uh, and so if I haven't escaped the J-5, I call you out because you came through whether it was 100 miles or the most challenging 25 miles of the Beltway that exists on the planet. I have ridden on Route Mobile in, uh, near Fallujah, and it is nothing like that. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and there's some Marines here who can tell you. Uh, you know, pretty much, thank you for coming. Thank you for spending this opportunity uh, with us. We are a blessed family. And what I will say to uh, everyone here as I look across the room, I see all the different bonds that bring together that will lead to the opportunity to try to meet this command as exceptionally as the Sullivan's. I'll start with the Sullivan's. Man, I have in 30 some years been in places and places with the Sullivan and always found them to be men of great repute. Thank you very much. I have not served with your brother having <laughs> drank margarita with this one, <laughs> and, uh, and beer. And this has been the most professional, complete, I can't say enough about Ferrell Sullivan. Maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should, I don't know. I find you to be what I was looking for when I joined the program. And, and still find you today. Um, and if you need anything, I would say you're always welcome back to training command. Like that. Like that. Because you are. You're going to find me in your office at, at CDD, sitting there going, what is this? <laughs> like that. And Farrell gave me the opportunity. I'll say this comment. Uh, some of you will get it. I spent the last week and a half with only one cell phone. Um, that's now, uh, back to it, but the opportunity to come out of the Joint Staff, out of the Pentagon, and he just immersed me into the organization, and I probably consumed about 1% to 2%. I think in what Gerald Hines has described to you is dead on point, actually it's point, 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 point. You're an exception. But you are a complete reflection of <laughs> <laughs> As I am of some. So thank you, too, for being the team that has set this opportunity for us and not. Uh, and going forward here. To others in the room, I heard Snap Rose's name called once or twice, and I said, yes, I remember being on the baton. Him and I have served together training Marines and sailors. I am looking forward to this relationship, because this guy knows how to fight. You know, get too hot. And I see many faces in this room of men and women who have served with in training opportunities. My Commodore is here, Keith Moore. And Keith was my other spouse for more than a year, as I was counseled several times myself by my current spouse. If you understand the relationship of a Navy captain and a Marine colonel, and stuff, in training Marines and sailors, we were like this, just one thing. And I'm so glad you're here. Reflect, for me, what it means to make Marines and to make sailors and to send them forward. That's one of the many bonds in this room. I see across this room some bonds of some brothers from a fraternity. Thank you for being here. I turn to and my family. Um, it's been 30 some years. I know some of y'all heard that number when Jerome Lyme said it. And my family has been my rock. They have been my anchor. Uh, it's one of the few groups that pull me out when I am full of certain adjectives. They are my greatest cheerleading supporting group. I love you. Thank you for coming this way. Now you know where the basic school is, Mom. The last time you were here was 31 years ago. <laughs> I got to my aunts and my uncles. Thank you for coming down. The invitation came, and what's a change of command? Now was what it came about. And they are all have been supportive of me, a grandson of an original mom for one sir. And then there's some sudden life. Cameron gets to represent the other five wayward ones who don't ever show up. <laughs> um, and helping to support. And just kind of quietly listening as we take on the Hey, honey, uh, we're going to do this right. OK? Um, so only thing I ask is if you change the furniture in the house, let me know, because I'll be gone. You know, I, 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 that has happened. There's certain Marines here who know it. 
take your cell phone and walk in and turn the light on, or you will flip over a couch. <laughs> but thank you for all the support. Thank you. I have moved you at the 11 month mark. I'm going to move you out of Arlington, Virginia to Monica. Yeah, so it will be lovely. Yeah, so like that. And, and you will get to be next to the train. But thank you for all of the support. <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up and just turn to training command and just make a couple of comments to the Marines of training. Hey, we make Marines. The transformation starts at the recruit depot. But it is not just sustained by training command. Every day we will make Marines. We stand in a long line that makes and sustains what a Marine and those men who are wearing the sailor's uniform meet of courage, honor, and commitment. So I'll add to that phrase. Here's a simple thing I think about when I'm making a Marine. How do they fight? How do they win? And how do they survive? carried that as the learning I've developed over two decades. I've seen Marines who learned to fight, learned to win, some who didn't learn to survive after him. We make Marines to do that. We will then hand them to the fleet. They will come back to us again, and we will remake. If you think about it, as a Marine, every day you wake up, you remake yourself as a Marine. Boots on, you look in the mirror, you make sure the uniform's squared. How many of you have gone in the kitchen looking for a ruler at night to make sure, although you have put that rank on a dozen hundred times, that's the making of a Marine. That is character. And we will be making Marines. By order, my first order as the commanding general training command, all plans, orders, instructions, and policies stay. You know what you're doing going to continue to do it well. Don't slow the march. Continue to march. From there, I'll come and I'll see you. I'll learn from you. I'll grow with you. I'll challenge you. I expect you to challenge me. You know how to turn and say, sir, I don't think that is quite right. I'm comfortable with that. Because if you're not willing to tell me the truth, then you're not making Marines. We make Marines. Uh, it's a simple mantra I have. From that, I feel blessed and honored to be your commanding general, as I've said. And I look forward to continuing that service. So, ladies and gentlemen, you know, opportunity. The narrator will narrate with that great voice. But we'll close out, I think, with a gift or something. And then from there, let's enjoy some libation and some socialization as we make it. Thank you. In lieu of flowers, Brigadier General Sullivan and Mrs. Sullivan will make a donation to the Chief Warrant Officer for Gunner Jesse Shirts Memorial Scholarship, and Brigadier General Henderson and Mrs. Henderson are making donations to the Semper Fi Fund. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the retiring of the colors, the playing of Anchors Away, and the Marines Hymn. Retire the colors.
ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of the Commanding General, Officers, Marines, and Sailors of Training Command, thank you for your attendance. We ask that you remain seated for a presentation to Brigadier General Sullivan. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much. You could uh, indulge us for a few brief moments. I uh, appreciate the comments of uh, General Sullivan with regard to uh, what Training Command staff has been able to do well. Uh, but as you can see to Charles Sullivan's right, uh, he had a very active and fulfilling family life. One of the things we were not able to do in the last few weeks of his uh, command tour is to synchronize his professional and personal schedule such that we could give him a small uh, token of our appreciation for his uh, significant contributions to training command. But I think it's very appropriate as well that uh, Charles Sullivan's family is here with us because uh, this truly has been uh, endeavor by the Sullivan family to be very welcoming uh, to all of Train Command, both the uh, sailors, the civilians, the Marines, and the families of Train Command, not just here in Quamico, but uh, throughout the command. And uh, as we've made reference a couple times uh, during the number of speeches, uh, this is a representation of all of those 17 MSE commands across the continental U.S. Uh, we do have a bit out in Hawaii and out in Okinawa. We didn't have a board large enough uh, for that. Uh, but this uh, was handmade by uh, one of the train command staff completely voluntarily, uh, of course, and during his opportunity time. Uh, this, uh, uh, the small amount of opportunity time that's afforded to uh, train command staff. Uh, but harvested with some wood here in Quantico and uh, again, representing those 17 commands. We did. That we might be an LBSR from Fort Lauderdale Wood to bring it in. Uh, we'll get that uh, to get down to your quarters, sir. But uh, on behalf of all training commands, sir, thank you. And Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brigadier General Farrell J. Sullivan, insert 28 July 2022, extract 10 June 2024. From the Marine, Sailors, Civilians, and Families of Training Command, we are eternally grateful for your dedication, guidance, and steadfast leadership during your tenure as Commanding General. Fair, wear fair winds and following seas. Semper Fi. Brigadier General Sullivan and Brigadier General Henderson would like to extend an invitation to join them at the Hawkins Room for a reception. Thank you. Thank you. 